Happy New Year. Today is January 8th, 2024, Housing Partnership. Um, I see we have one guest. Um, I'm not sure. It says LB iPhone. Guest LB, would you like to introduce yourself or are you here just to listen? Okay. Hey, Carmen, it's Laura Baker. <laughs> oh, hi, my guest. Laura. I'm just on, a, on an iPad cooking in my kitchen. I'm here to listen. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Um, all right, everybody. Um, so let's go directly to the minutes from December 4th. I hope people have read them. And I wondered if there were any corrections, objections, or motion to approve. Motion to approve. What, Gwen? Motion to approve. Okay, thank you. I'll second that. Thank you, Bev. Um, we need to do a voice vote, so um, let's go around. Uh, Melissa? Yes. Richard? Yes. Gordon? It's Jane, I wasn't here. Hannah? Yes. Uh, Edgar? Uh, thanks. Okay. Um, and I say yes, and obviously when you and Bev motioned, so I think we have the minutes approved. So is that Edgar and uh, Gordon, did you abstain as well? I abstained, yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, we did, we did want to invite the mayor here today and we sent her the letter, as you all know, but she, um, her schedule has not allowed it. I don't know, Keith, if you got any reading from her on if she can come in the future or if that's still up in the air. I have not received uh, any notification. Okay. Um, hi, Ace. Welcome. Um, all right, so we are going to go on to agenda item four, update on CBD, CDBG funding. I think that's you, Keith. Yeah, this is just a very quick um, March, uh, I believe it's 14th, uh, we'll have our draft um, um, action plan meeting. And so that's our um, action plan for next year, um, where we're going to be presenting some CDBG activities. Uh, we usually have... Um, affordable housing uh, things in there uh, and so like housing development so valley cdc habitat um, things like that um, and usually housing rehab um, so uh, I'll, when it gets closer i will definitely send an update um, when that you know of the meeting the link um, but if there's any public comments and things like that uh, that you all want to give you can certainly give it at the meeting uh, but that meeting starts a 30 day public comment period um, where any comments uh, sent to me um, for that will be uh, integrated into the land or noted. Um, but if you have any other ideas beforehand about things that we can consider, um, uh, please let me know um, that the notification of funding does go out to a wide net so hopefully uh, everyone that does affordable housing work that is eligible knows about it. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them, but really just the FYI um, and that's really it. So just to clarify, did you say that once the applications are in, there will be um, an opportunity for us to look at them, see them, and or make comments? There'll be a draft action plan. Um, so the meeting will be open to the public um, and any committee members uh, to look at the plan and kind of see how we're allocating the money for next year. Um, and it will likely have some housing, uh, affordable housing activities on there. Okay, comments? Questions? 
All right, I guess that's very straightforward. Um, so main main agenda item, discuss goal setting for next year. For this year, I should say. Um, Keith sent around um, the um, goals sheet, um, goals and process sheet that was sort of devised from the 2019 Fair Housing Report. Um, it hasn't really, the goals and, and worksheet hasn't really updated, been updated in a while, but if you took a glance at that, I think you have an idea of some of the things that we've talked about and worked on and some things that could come up in the future. Um, I just wanted to start this discussion off just to share a couple of thoughts with you. One is when I looked at that rules worksheet, I kept coming back to some things we've been talking about anyway in the last few months, which has been um, uh, a, a gathering uh, a meeting, perhaps or like a regional meeting of developers to um, get information from them about what may be standing in their way, um, what are the obstacles, what are the you know, what are the, um, uh, what is the nature of um, their building business right now that we could learn from and tap into? Um, Gordon, I think you and Richard have been, you know, sort of a big part of these discussions. And um, I, I think that's a worthwhile endeavor. Um, of course, the other thing that comes to mind is question mark discussion tonight. Um, uh, the Municipal Housing Trust um, and um, how we're going to proceed with that. Um, so I just open up the discussion like that and see what other people would like to add. Um, could I just ask a clarifying question? So the, the list of goals, objectives, whatever that uh, Richard shared, that was produced in 2019? Um, the one that Keith sent around, you mean? Yeah. In, I'm yes. sorry, Keith. Yeah. Yeah, those goals came from pretty much assessment, which came, which was um, the fair housing assessment was uh, published in 2019. Right. Yeah. And those are goals for this group or for a broader range of um, organizations? There's a mixture. Um, all those goals had primary um, people or um, support organizations right. of partners. Um, so I tried to, um, it, it was, you know, I was copying from PDF. So um, kind of pulling those out that the housing partnership had um, and then kind of leaving the things that were maybe higher level or, you know, within the city council, but things that were relevant to us. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out whether at any time this was the list of things this group wanted to accomplish because it's a long list. <laughs> right, I think that's, it's more like, hey, this is what's been assigned to us. And then of these, <laughs> what do we want to work on and what do we want to prioritize? Yeah. I think some of them, you know, there's low hang, there's, um, you know, things that might be easier, might be quick wins. You know, we've seen with the, um, the things in the uh, going to the state level, it's um, you know we're just kind of waiting. So you know what do we what do, what do we want to work on next? Yeah, I I, I don't mean to be um, obtuse here, but I'm just trying to figure out whether this is a document or a set of objectives that is shared by anyone else. So you know, if the mayor were here, would she relate to this list, or is this really just sort of a compilation of? stuff that came out of the plan? You ask an excellent question. That, that is why I was hoping the mayor would be here so that we could get, um, uh, kind of get a read on, on just what you said. Um, that how, fair housing report that was finished in 2019 was for the city of Northampton. But, you know, we don't know. Are other people looking at that and where are they with this? We're not sure. Okay, it, thanks. Ace, I know you've had your hand up. So I uh, only just now realized that there was multiple tabs in the document. Um, I had my question was going to be, you know, in the 2019 tab, it's assigned to a lot of people whose names I recognize. But 
who are no longer part of the partnership and how that was working. Um, mm. And I have now realized that I slightly misread this. So uh, never mind. Okay. Hannah. I also just want to make sure, Gwen, did you want to speak first? I saw that you had a hand up for a minute. I just want to be sure, I wanted to be sure, I did look at this, um, but I wanted to be sure what this was coming off of was the Unlocking Opportunities report. Is that the one? Right. Okay. Yes. I'm wondering if everybody got to see it or everyone knows what that is. And I've, I've looked at it pretty extensively. There was a lot in there. A lot. Yeah. Yes. Anna? Uh, yeah, I, you know, looking at the list, I felt like the 2019 tab, I really liked the way that that was laid out. It feels like out of all of the tabs here, it was one that seemed both actionable and like there were kind of accountable goals to come back to and keep track of. When I look at the 2023, 2024, I mean, I think it's, it makes sense that there's, that they're not organized the same way because we haven't done the work to organize them. So um, I'm just curious if this conversation is supposed to be like, are we going to read down this list out loud and then talk about which things appeal to people? Um, is the goal to like get to something more akin to the 2019 tab? Um, I think the goal of tonight is more to consolidate our own um, wishes and thoughts about what we want to do next and what we want to focus on. Keith put the that um, fair, fair housing tab in um, to help us um, remember what some of the past goals were that were pulled out of the fair housing report and some things that we've worked on. Um, I it's, it's so much up to us where our energy lies and what we want to put our energy into. Um, so I know that in past years, um, we have gone through this sort of point by point and said and, and discussed that endlessly. And it, I, I would rather approach it from the idea that we want to see where all of our energies are um, in order to make best use of this particular group and what we think is most important. Hannah. Is, uh, is the best way to do that, like is that a round table where everybody should sort of speak and, and say what they're wanting to work on this year or is it just like free form? Would you, would you like to start with that thought? Um, I, I don't know if I have, I want to like, I'll listen first. <laughs> okay. I think that we have often gone back in these discussions, it seems to me, to something that, um, Bev, you brought up a number of times, um, here, which is that why has it been so hard to reinstate the um, municipal housing trust when you know, clearly money is needed and there could be other streams of money and there are and communities can make that. And I think that out of that, we came to the idea that having a, a kind of convening a meeting with developers might help us understand more um, where, where some of their obstacles were. Yeah, I, I continue to think that's a good idea. I don't, I have some theories about what would come out of such a conversation. Um, I also have, um, I would be very surprised if what they said is money's not a problem. Um, and that's what we, you know, sort of heard. Uh, and I think we want to put that issue to rest or not before we do a whole lot more in terms of that agenda item. Um, the other barriers, I, I would suspect that almost everything on that list could be cited as a barrier. And what 
would, I think, make us feel more productive is to really look at the low hanging fruit, things that are both reasonably changeable in the political and practical world in which we live and that align with this group's um, capacity and uh, relative, quite frankly, lack of authority. Mm -hmm. So, so may, maybe to, to Gwen's uh, point, the best, uh, or to Hannah's point, the best way to have the conversation might be um, to try to set some standards for uh, what should be elevated out of the list of, you know, 30 or whatever. Um, and I just sort of offered up a couple of standards. I'm not saying it has to be a slam dunk. We want, we're going to do some work. We're going to advocate, but if something is just not aligned with realities in Northampton, I don't think we should spend a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I will give an example. I, I am very, really interested in the topic of inclusionary zoning. Mm -hmm. um, but the practical reality is um, how many new um, market rate developments are being built in the city right now, I honestly don't know. It's not a ton. And if the inclusionary piece would be 10% of the units, um, certainly better than nothing. But I don't know what 10% of a number I don't know is. Mm -hmm. you, you hear what I'm saying? I also have no clue as to how much resistance there would be from the uh, market rate development community to that kind of a proposition. Mm -hmm. It's not to say we couldn't answer all those questions one way or another. It's just to say, if we're gonna be in the business of trying to get at, you know, quote unquote truth um, in this stuff, we should be working on three or four things, not, you know, yeah. again, 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe some historical perspectives. During my tenure, on the partnership, you know, we've, we've worked with two different consultants in the 12 years, I guess, that I've been involved. Um, going back to um, 2010, 2011, we uh, did a strategic plan. Um, a lot of the ideas, and, uh, and that's a plan, that was a plan that, to inform that. And we've, all, every year we, you know, the partnership, we would do this, go through this exercise of, okay, here's a menu of strategies that's being recommended by a consultant, how we can remove barriers to increasing affordable housing. And fair housing is sort of a subset of that as well. Issues and barriers about people being able to move in aside from affordability. Um, and, you know, and then more recently we had the uh, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission do the impediments to fair housing, which, um, Honestly, it it, it, it it recycled some of the things that we we, we knew already in 2010 um, and 2011. Um, so, um, and again, it's just meant to be a menu of options of things that we should do. And of course, we we are, you know, we're a volunteer committee. We really, honestly, we really don't have a lot of authority. Um, <laughs> We're not, we're not the creator of affordable housing. I, I, I like to think of what our role is, boils down to three essential things. One is that we, we're here to advise the city on affordable housing issues. Um, and, 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 and so we, we've done that through uh, engaging with different consultants um, who have given us good information, good data, good analysis. So that's one of the things that we do. We, we're an advisory committee. The second thing that we can do is we are here to encourage and support the development of, of things that would remove um, barriers to affordable and fair housing. And the last thing that, and we, we do that, um, we've done that, um, discrete projects through the years. And the last thing that I think our role is that we're here to educate the community as well. So those are the three bins that our work fall into. And um, each of those alone is, is, is very, can, can generate a lot of work. I also just wanna take note that we've got a lot of things that we've been working on um, through the years that have sort of stalled out a little bit, but we haven't forgotten. And that's partly why we wanna get the mayor involved because we want the city to take a more active role in pushing some of these concepts that we've, had, we've been pushing. Um, and I think this idea of having a forum for on um, uh, developers to come together to talk to learn from them what the barriers are can help inform other things that we may want to take on it may help us part up 
yeah. tear down this list as well. And that's a big project. If we're going to do that, it's going to take a lot of planning and effort on our part to do that. So we don't want to overextend. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, Gordon, for that perspective. I think that really, what you said is really important, just to remind us of those things. Um, so I'm just going to say a couple of things and see if other people have thoughts or run off this. One is that, um, you know, one of my, one of my wishes that's mentioned in the fair housing plan, um, as a potential, um, goal to work towards is to identify, which I don't see how we can do this, but I'll say what it is to identify land and buildings that could be used for fair housing. And I just think, yeah, that's a great goal, but that's not, I'm not so sure that that's something that we have the knowledge or the authority to do. Um, and then my second thought is, let me go back to the um, housing trust fund. Where, where are we at with the housing trust fund? I mean, we have not received support from the city. We have wanted to pursue it and research it. I'd like to hear a little bit from people who've been more active with it, what the thinking is at this point in time. Gwen? Um, I just want to talk about a couple of things, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing um, that I was thinking is that the list, um, just to go back to the list, um, you know, I don't know like how nitty gritty we want to get tonight or if we should plan for more of a discussion when people are, you know, more prepared or if everyone is prepared to talk about the nitty gritty of it. But um, there were some thoughts that I have about some items that are on the list. Um, so for example, um, this is just one example, housing stabilization um, creates support services that stabilize tenancies. And mm -hmm. then it talks about Center for Human Development um, and working with Center for Human Development. And so I don't know who the Center for Human Development is, but I wonder if that would now fall under Department of Community Care or if there could be some outreach with Department of Community Care um, in, in regards to, because another item there is to try to reduce homelessness. Um, and then in regards to um, another huge thing that's been in the news that everyone is talking about is the change from DHCD to the Executive Office of um, Housing and Livable Communities. And with that change of that department, there's like a huge bond bill that I think we should be talking about um, because within the bond bill, there is mention of trust funds. Um, and my concern, my growing concern could be that if we don't have this trust fund going, we might miss out on some of this bond bill money. And so I'm wondering um, how that would work. Um, in regards to where the trust fund stands, I think it's really hard to know until we have um, GL come back and we can really have like a discussion about so many of, of these things. So those are some of my thoughts. Thanks. I mean, just one thing I've thought of just um, in, in response to what you just said, Gwen, is that I think that if the bond bill comes to fruition and there needs to be a place to put the money, I'll bet you that the, that the housing trust fund would be up and running like in no time. I mean, that's just what I think. I mean, we're we're sort of spinning our wheels with it, but it's there, it's dormant. And right. if there's money to be had, especially a lot of money from the state, I mean, that's gonna come up, uh, be back up whether we put effort into it or not. I, I believe, I don't think Northampton is gonna say, well, we don't have a place for that bond money. I'm sorry, you know? Oh, okay. That's what I think. I mean, that's my opinion, yeah. Ace? Jumping back slightly, but um, 
regarding ongoing things to to keep an eye on um i know that i have taken point a lot on both the um renters fee ban and the uh trying to get the transfer fee bill to happening um so so for this coming year um I know I would be happy to take point with continuing those two things, um, you know, continuing contacting representatives to see the status of that, of the tenants fee ban, um, as well as uh, updating the spreadsheet about, you know, if we had had the transfer tax last year and it was enacted with, um, you know, the what the what the governor had recommended, um, you know, how much money would Northampton have gotten? into the housing trust fund if we had set that up and you know continuing advocacy around that um you know with uh with permission of the housing partnership i can uh draft an op-ed um to basically propose and then bring to folks next meeting um to you know uh approve change etc if you think that would be a good use of time um that said um, I think that, you know, it's, if people are interested in something, it's not enough to say, oh, I think this is a good idea. Um, like, I think assigning people or having people self-assign to specific things of like, yeah, this is the thing I'm going to be following and following up on. Similarly to in the 2019 document, those were specific names, specific people mm -hmm. doing specific things. Um, so, you know, if it is specific names of people working on the, um, housing trust funds, if it's people, specific people working on other things, like, I don't know, tenants right to counsel sounds like a great thing to advocate for and see what resources there are in the city that exists already in ways to, you know, advertise those and make those more visible, um, you know, picking one at random, but I continue to think that like you know the two the two things that i'm working on are the things that i want to take point on i don't want to take point on anything else i'm happy to continue to act in support for various things but those two are i don't know my responsibility that i want to take on this year and um what did you say though about um drafting an op-ed um so my idea was regarding the transfer fee tax, uh, because that's something that has been, you know, floated and, you know, gently said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to it um, in a way that, you know, it continues to not happen. Um, if you'll remember, uh, both last year and the prior year, I had a spreadsheet that said, here's what we would have made with a transfer fee if we had one. Mm -hmm. I want to update that data and I want to basically draft an op-ed saying, hey, if we had done the transfer fee like this, this is how much money we would have made in 2023. Um, yeah. Here's the number of people that it would impact it. Here's why it's a good idea and, you know, why why it's a thing that, you know, we'd, we'd advocate for um, if that's the opinion of the housing partnership. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what do people think about that? I, I like that idea. I appreciate you're willing to do that, Ace. It sounds like it's it's worthwhile to do, and definitely there's going to be a PR effort that needs to happen because I, I think the governor is behind the idea of a transfer bill. Um, so um, it's probably going to happen, and then we need to be able to jump in when it's ready. Yeah, um, and I would use the governor's proposal as the basis for if Nora Hampton enacted, you know, what she has said rather than all the various permutations that we've discussed um but yeah. yeah um what you're also i like what you're laying out that these were the things that were of interest to you right which mm -hmm. are the things that you followed you're still going to follow them you're going to keep us informed and that's what i meant before i think when i said we need to pick things that we have the energy for and that this group is is sort of ripe for Hannah? 
As we've been talking, I've been making a list of the projects that have been mentioned that uh, that sound like to me the projects that we're actively working on on the housing partnership, separate from the list of the possible goals. And I just want to say the ones that I've written down and see if there's any that we haven't said yet or any that I missed that are kind of like active projects. Um, I've written down three, the home rule petition that's currently pending in the legislature um, for the broker fee ban, the real estate transfer fee, and reactivating the affordable housing trust fund. Are there others that are people are actively working on or Gwen? Gwen. Hi. Um, okay, so this is, I guess you could say somewhat of an announcement, but there are some bills that I am supporting right now. Um, one is, I believe it's 3868 or 3686. I don't remember. It's a hostile environment bill for residents um, in public housing or other affordable type housing situations or any really rental housing situation. Um, so it put some protection in place. Um, there have been a lot of problems with like mobbing and different things like that in various housing complexes. Because of the pol politics and the sign of the times, um, we've seen some of this happening. So that's one bill. Um, and then another one, um, as Ace mentioned, is, I forget what number it is, but it does involve council for tenants. And so that's a big one. Um, in regards to uh, mass mass union um, uh, of housing, public housing tenants, I know that they're also working on increasing support for uh, complexes to have LTOs. And as an incentive, they're getting a little bit more money, hopefully, um, so that LTOs can own and operate as a business as they should. And you know, enrich, you know, tenant participation. And an LTO uh, is what? LTO? What is local it? Tenants, an LTO is a local tenants organization. Okay. Yeah. And it doesn't, It. I mean, it doesn't, you don't have to just live in public housing for this. Like, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe there's like a complex up at Village Hill or something and the tenants decide they want to get together and just have that extra layer of protection through mass law or whatever, um, you know, they can form a tenants organization. And off of that, they can spin off and have like a tenants association, which is more social stuff. Um, if there are like similar complaints that are coming up repeatedly, the president or the vice president or the speaker of that LTO would kind of go to a meeting and address that uh, rather than residents just going individually and feeling nervous about it. It would they would they would vote for their own representatives and things mm -hmm. like that. So these are these are these are issues that you're following. Right? These are all a lot of the things that I'm yeah. following. And yeah. many I, of those bills have been filed and refiled because they're very hard to get past like the right to call speaks to my world which I know that my organization and Mass, uh, Mass yes. Legal Assistance Corp have been supporting it. Um, and the fear is it'll be an unfunded mandate. Um, the, another one that's out there is a, and really, really important is, there, is the sealing of eviction records as well. It's, oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, for yes. sure, yeah. Um, Gordon, can you explain the details of that one? Um, there's specific um conditions to the ceiling that are proposed i forget what the yeah i'm not I'm, i don't it keeps getting refiling and keeps getting massaged a little differently but the basic idea is that it, you know after a certain period of time it, you wouldn't be able to access um access and people you know right now you can go on to mass uh mass courts it's a public yep. court you can access all the court records and, and specifically you can get in and look at the housing court records and you can run names and you can see what the, if that person's ever been involved in housing court. And right now, you know, just because you had a case filed against you doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong, but usually people take a negative inference mm -hmm. from just the fact that the landlord filed exactly. against you. So, and, and it, particularly for no fault evictions, which right now is an, epi right. it's at an epidemic level. It's like everybody, landlords are getting out of the business, they're selling properties and we're facing a lots of these no fault evictions and there's no 
and there's mm. no place for people to move. So, and part of the barrier is that people are, um, they're, 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 they got these no fault evictions on their record. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's unfortunate because then it's people are being, um, we think that people are being, uh, denied housing as a result of that. And mm. it never go, it never goes away. Never goes no. away. It stays forever. Yeah. So, you know, at 30 years could go by and, you know, maybe someone just looks up, up a name and, you know, something happened 20 years ago and they say oh i don't you know want to rent to that person because they had something and they don't care whether it was no fault or not you know so yeah that's yeah that's a big one so i think that um these are these are good thoughts these are things that are in slow process hannah i just want to go back to you for a moment um and see if there were other things that you wanted to add uh, yeah, I mean, the, the ones that I wrote down were just the ones that I've heard mentioned, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything that people are actively working on. I mean, in terms of what I want to work on, I would love to keep pushing the home rule petition. Um, it's never clear to me if there's like more that I could be doing, um, you know, like if sending annoying emails, it actually makes things happen faster. Um, so, I mean, Ace, like I would be interested in meeting with you and if anybody else wants to meet to have like a subcommittee meeting, cool. Um, is that the kind of thing that gets scheduled by email? I forget how that works. Um, just for um, open meeting law. Well, it's the kind of thing that once it's scheduled, Keith has to know and there has to be at least a minimal agenda, right, Keith? So you can post it. But yeah, I think we can schedule it by email. Okay. If we're worried about um, there being a quorum of people, yeah, we need to post it. But if it's, you know, a smaller group, it's fine. Oh, great. Okay. So great. you're free, free to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I think that, yeah, we've been talking about some of the um, very kind of concrete things we've been working on. I just want to pull the, um, the lens back to a bigger picture thing and go back to two things we already talked about today. One is where do we want to go if we know with the researching for the housing trust fund first of all and the second thing is this idea of uh, a more of a regional developer meeting to learn from them to learn from them what is you know tell us and teach us i kind of like am thinking yeah i mean that's something that i'd be interested in and i I, I think there needs to be a committee to get that going, but I don't know what other people think. When? I know for sure, um, just by attending other meetings in the city or just watching them, without a doubt, over the last couple of years, we've had an increase in building costs, and that's a really big thing. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing could be, like, scarcity of land, um, you know, zoning. Um, zoning is actually listed as something that we should all that's that's one of the goals in the fair housing thing that we had from 2019 um so um you know i think you know i know bev goes to planning meetings or development sustainability development meetings and things like that that might involve some zoning um but i feel that i am doing quite a bit in housing from the angle that I come from. Um, but, you know, I- You are, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I'm gonna keep working on those things. I'm not gonna quit that, um, but then I'm, I'm also doing a lot of work with um, supporting people and forming LTOs and things like that. So um, sometimes it helps to have an outside person instead of the people that actually live in the place. Because what happens is people that live in the place have a history, a difficult history with each other. Mm -hmm. And so like when somebody kind of cuts in from the side and kind of comes in, it's um, it's very helpful. Um, and so, you know, the, the person that's coming in sideways doesn't have a, the same history um, like residents might. And so I think that's part of the success. Um, yeah. But it gives me hope that there is interest in this happening. And I, I hope it can happen all over the city with all of the different little uh, low-income complexes that we have in the city. 
Thanks, Gwen. So let's go back once again to the housing trust fund. What, what do we want to do with that at this point? Do people have any ideas? You're free to say you don't have any ideas. That's fine. I thought Ace was going to say, let's keep track of the money that we're losing that we don't have the trust fund. Like mm -hmm. what funding we miss out on by not having that, you know? So, so, so I can, I can give exact numbers on money we would have earned with the transfer fee bill. Uh, I, I can't say any other housing money that we're leaving on the table. Um, but, but I can, I can give one number. <laughs> Yeah. In other words, like if 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 that money was being collected and being funneled into the trust fund, you know, how much interest would it have gained, you know, at that time or uh, I don't know. Yeah. Thanks. Well, this is why it'd be interesting to have like a dollar amount attached to that. So we'll await your further your further um calculations. I can I can go back to 2017. That's as far as we have data for. Yeah. What about the idea of a regional meeting with developers. I'm interested in that. I have no idea how to convene that, but I think with a few people here, we can we can do that. There are some, you know, questions in person, Zoom, invitations, when, where, questions. But I think we could learn a lot and um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm very interested in that too. I'm sorry, Melissa has her hand up. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, it's a, we're in the same field and uh, that's an area where I could potentially help as well. I mean, from a construction standpoint, those were the two other items I had on my list was the meeting with the developers we've been talking about. Um, you know, I think it, it'd it go a long way to touch base with them and Things a lot of things have changed in the last three years, and just see where they're at right now. Um, mm -hmm. The other item I had on my list was um, what you mentioned a little bit ago, Carmen, was identifying pieces of land and buildings in the city that could potentially be used. Um, I wasn't privy to how the last batch got identified, but that yeah. batch is now has been running past us in the on the planning board here over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they've are they been going through and into fruition, you mm -hmm. know, the piece down on Crafts Avenue and the piece on the Evergreen and, um, you know, over at the Moose Lodge. And um, yeah. so uh, those are happening and that's real. And I don't know if there's other pieces of parts and pieces of the city that could be you know, they, they can't be used for anything else. They're these really weird little pieces of land that don't conform to anything. Um, right. and, and we're and we're turning them into housing, which is fantastic. So maybe that's a question for Keith is uh, where how do you how do how did that even get come to fruition before? And is anybody still uh, are there any other parcels or opportunities out there that anybody's looking at? I think I saw a parcel the other day for 145 in Northampton. I'm just throwing it out there. Keith, if I'm remembering, I know that when when Peg was in your position, that we had discussions around identifying parcels that could that the city could could push out to developers. Um, I don't know if that list still is. It's been many few years, but we had we had an inventory list. Um, and I also remember we did something with the with developers. Oh, it must be now a decade ago. Um, I remember being at the art gallery on Main Street. We had uh, we a lot of seating and it was well attended. I don't know, Laura, if you were around and attended that. I'm trying to remember what the focus was, but I do a couple of things that strike me about organizing a sort of forum or symposium. One is if we need someone who is, we had someone come in who was capable of um, facilitating the discussion. It wasn't one of us. It was somebody we brought in. Um, I don't remember who that was. And I do remember that part of what was, and we needed an agenda, we needed a purpose and a discussion. One of the things that we did talk about was that we actually looked at a, a parcel of land and we asked the developers to talk about how they would develop it. And I think that one of the parcels was that one at the very end, when you first come onto, off the highway into Pleasant Street, there's a, piece, a very small piece of land 
that was what was the focus of what we would do with it. Um, people talked about it being more like recreational space because it wasn't big enough to put a structure on, but the city owned it. Um, like near before Holyoke Street, but even before that, there's another street there. But I do remember it was sort of organized. It was more of a of, a, of an act with activities. It wasn't just an open discussion of um, you know kinds of getting generating ideas around that. But it doesn't have to be the same thing. But that's the sort of that was what and it was filled. It was there was a good 50, 60 people in the room. Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that's a really interesting idea because um, if you sent that parcel of land out to the developers in the invitation to come they would actually put some thought behind it and maybe even sketch some things up and they would literally be sitting there with, yeah, if I had this piece of land, this is what I might do with it. And these are the issues I might run into. Um, and that could be a really active conversation and fruitful conversation. For sure. Definitely. Yeah. How can we get started on this? It sounds like there's some interest, Gordon, Melissa, Beth. We have a I, list of developers to start with, like specific people that are local, or um, how would that work? It, Sorry, it would be my um suggestion that you not narrow the list too much, because part of what we're trying to, I think, respond to is there may not be enough players in our market right now, and so mm -hmm. if we only go with the people who have been in the market, um, the reality in the funding world if you're doing rental and it's going to have tax credits is that no developer is going to get any more than one tax credit allocation per funding round and so the more you have um obviously the 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 more everybody has a chance of bringing money into your your community um i i i think we should include both nonprofit and for profit there are lots of for-profit developers who do good quality, well-managed, mixed income and or affordable housing. Um, and maybe even think about inviting some people who play similar roles to ours in similar communities. Mm -hmm. Because I think, I, I know for a fact that one of the conversations that keeps trying to have it happen is how do we start thinking about the problem of scarcity um, as a regional problem, not just the city of Northampton problem, because yeah. city of Northampton is not big enough to solve for any problem, perhaps, but its own. Um, uh, and again, it really is is a re regional challenge. So mm -hmm. um, those are really good ideas. And I also like the idea of starting a, a list or spreadsheet or something that we can all add to um, um, with uh, developers, both for-profit, non-profit, et cetera, large, small. Um, yeah, I, I think we need to start kind of gathering that information together. Gordon also mentioned that um, there was a facilitator involved the last time around that was an important piece of the puzzle. Um, who, who you know, basically came up with the questions to ask. So that might be a starting point as well, is identifying if that's something that's needed and if so, so who would that be? And then reaching out to whoever yeah. the entity is. And Gordon, was that, do you remember if that facilitator back then was somebody with um, a good knowledge base of development? I believe so. I'm, I'm trying to go, I'm looking through my, folder of my electronic folder see if I have anything on this. I, I don't I can't find anything that speaks to the program mm -hmm. itself, but but it's been a while. I don't know if it still exists somewhere in PEGS. Uh, are we assuming this person would need to be paid? No, I don't think it was. Um, I mean the planning department was there. I mean it was would this would this be something? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, Bev, but would this be something that Bev could facilitate with her knowledge? Is it something um, that Alex Jarrett might have been involved with? Sorry, Bev. I think that I think it was before Alex's time, to tell you the truth. Yeah. That was well before Alex came on the scene. Well before Alex's time, yeah. 
Um, anyway, how do we want to proceed? This is this is an idea that's obviously we're we're all interested in. Well, it seems like just to summarize, it seems like we're with planning is is a regional event, not just Northampton. So and so it probably means reaching out to other communities, other partnerships and asking if they'd want to be part of planning this together. And then from there, figuring out what the, what the actual symposium would look like. Um, and, you know, we talked, you know, we can identify Northampton puzzle, but it can be other puzzles as well. Cause it's really just an exercise in understanding mm -hmm. issues. It's not about, we're gonna give you this land after the end of the meeting um, to develop. Um, and then, and then I think from there, we then figure out who actually is facilitating based upon what we decide. And maybe that someone will emerge as, as a likely mm -hmm. good candidate, um, or we can recruit somebody um, who is outside of the partnership. Mm -hmm. But it starts, I think, with reaching out to other other um, partnerships. And the question get, if, if we want to begin with: Do we want to reach beyond Hampshire County? I'm sorry, I mean, beyond what? Beyond Hampshire County. I, I definitely think that we should reach out beyond Hampshire County, but I'm not sure how far. Um, because it is a regional thing. Um, it's Would that reaching out be to something like Franklin County or Hamden County, I mean, I think I would be, that sounds awfully big to me. Um, I mean, what I if know. what if the outreach was to the areas that are in our, you know, same, uh, you know, uh, market rate? Right, so like East Hampton. Um, Amherst. Amherst. We're part of Greater Springfield. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. So that, that's that, what I meant. Would, would that be East Hampton, Gordon? Well, I, initially, I think that the easy one is to just reach out to our neighboring communities, the bigger ones like Amherst, East Hampton. Okay. I know maybe Hadley. I don't know if Hadley has a yeah partnership. Um, will, um, but you know, if you pull in Springfield and Holy, which are the bigger ones to the south, it's real. I don't know. Maybe does it really change the dynamic of it because their 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 issues are so fundamental. Yeah, that seems too wide ranging to me. It's pretty big. Too uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm wondering if, if in addition to um, gathering a, a list um, of developers, we can also work on a list of um, uh, specific people or housing partnerships. I know not 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 every town has that to contact to invite, and have some sort of timeline like um, work on these lists between now and February. Uh, figure out a place and a um, approximate month we want to have this, start reaching out to, to housing partnership people or the equivalent. Um, and then continue the planning process from there. Yeah, but I would start. I mean, we can't, we can't wait to February. We need to, if we're going to reach out, we should reach out between now and February and, and then form a committee that wants to work on this. I think the, the logical place okay. to begin are Amherst and East Hampton because they both have housing partnerships and we've had, we've done joint meetings with them in the past. It's not like okay. we haven't worked with them before. We, we've, that's something else to consider. We could do joint meetings with them as well. Amherst and East Hampton. Okay. We that was back when we used to do these in person. <laughs> right. That sounds good to me. What if we started with reaching out to those two? And then, you know, maybe that organically grows to something else and maybe it doesn't, but at a minimum we've got three, us and the two of them that are, you know, that's a pretty significant swath of area. And then mm -hmm. at the same time, we start putting together, um, I mean, I can uh, put together, uh, I can attempt to, you know, come up with some names of developers. Um, I, I'm sure I'm speak for Bev, but, you know, mm -hmm. might be able to help with that. And anybody else, for that matter, we could just um, kind of um, 
come together with a, a first pass of mm -hmm. people we might invite. And then um, with those two things in hand, think about how far out we're shooting mm -hmm. and uh, and who we want to facilitate, who we want to facilitate it. Uh, and of course, if we're going to get a yes from other regional people like East Hampton or Amherst, they are going to have their own ideas about at contributing to the list and, and, and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, okay. Do people have specific, are, are there specific names attached to the East Hampton and Amherst housing partnerships? So, so I, I also have um, a sense that this would not be a unique meeting. I think there are meetings like this that have happened uh, and not uh, too long ago. Uh, the question of, um, you know, which groups, but um, convened by uh, legislators who are interested in getting people to talk about these very issues, particularly in the context of the bond bill. Mm -hmm. um, so I am... Uh, uh, on the board of the Home City Development Organization in Springfield, uh, mm -hmm. which has done a little bit of development in Northampton. Yeah. And um, Tom Kegelman is the executive director. He also is a resident of Amherst and he's up to his eyeballs in everything happening. He was on the partnership. He was on the housing trust, blah, blah, blah. So I'd be happy to ask him just a you know, has this been done? And if so, how has it gone? Are we being redundant uh, in some way? Uh, and B, um, who are the people that uh, really uh, need to be there? Uh, mm -hmm. Particularly if we're saying Hadley, excuse me, not Hadley, East Hampton and Amherst. Um, I'll put that on my list. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so you're gonna ask that person um, I'd be happy to delve into East Hampton. Thanks, Gwen, for that, for that, um, link and, um, see who I can find there who might want to partner with us. Um, I had thought about Southampton because there's that woman there, Sierra Shane or somebody like that, who totally on her own got the city to back um, a municipal housing trust fund and Southampton essentially had no affordable housing before this happened a few years ago. I'm curious about her process. Maybe that, maybe we'll leave that um, and start with Amherst and um, East Hampton first. Other parts of the plan, the very beginning part of this plan that we're missing or need to talk about now. Okay. Uh, Carmen, can I just say something? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it, what I have is an Excel. Um, we can't, um, we can't, because we can't work on things simultaneously, like on a Google Docs. So if anyone wants to change the format or do something a little different, um, please have at it. Um, I personally have it in Asana and um, that works a little better because some of the things are more complex, but I'm also <laughs> the only one working on it in Asana. So um, if you know, it's you know it's more of a collaborative working environment type thing. So, um, but if you, if you want to do something different in Excel, please uh, feel free. So if we're all out there, you know, coming up with names and, and whatnot, um, should we be sending them to Carmen or Keith or? I think it's, I think Keith, because Keith, then you could compile and we could put yeah. it in with our next minutes, right? I mean, not yeah, minutes, yeah. agenda, right? Yeah, Keith, send them to Keith. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Also, I want to go back to something you said, Melissa, about um, the different parcels of land that were identified citywide that are now being built upon. Isn't another one of those parcels Laurel Street? 
wasn't that given to the city, given to um, um, Laura Baker, et cetera, by the city? Or am I, do I have that wrong? That the one where the um, the 17 units are going in? Yes. It was originally part of the Hospital Hill development. Yeah. And I think that exactly. did get um, yeah. uh, donated. Yeah, I, I think it did. I, I think I think I think it was donated to them for a dollar or something like that. So that's another important contribution that the city has, and I have a feeling there are other spots, etc. But you know, hard to know how to identify them. Is there a list, Keith, or is that something I can just um, I can help to um, follow up on? I I've, I've never seen a list of just. Um parcels that we own. I mean, I, I know of the parcels that I'm working on that were all have given housing choice money. So that's the Cook Avenue, Evergreen, Woodland, and not Woodland, Oak. Right. That's another one. Um, but they're all moving at different speeds. Um, mm -hmm. So right. So we all aware Cook Avenue is the one that Habitat is going to put four units on at the end of Cook Avenue going up the Boggy Meadow uh, Greenway or whatever that is. Um, mm -hmm. But I I don't know of a list of parcels, but um, there's things I'm interested in, but I'm keeping it secret until I know that I have support because I could be eviscerated if I... Um, so I'll just leave it for now. I, I can also, um, I'll just look around a little bit and see if, any such list. I'll just talk to um, Carolyn and George and, and other members of the planning board and, and see if any such list exists. Okay. Uh, I'll do that. I know that this has been brought up with the city before, but there's a city building just to the right of the synagogue across from the Y. And I don't know if it's used by the DPW at all anymore. It's a brick building. I think that's city land. And I've often uh, no, the, wondered about that. The, the water department building? Um, That could very well be, yeah. Yeah, I believe, I don't know if it's a synagogue or it's a, um, one of their groups owns it, but they're connected. Um, and so the- That is CBI. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's not owned by the city anymore. Okay. All right. Sounds like we have a plan with this. Developers list to keep, he'll compile that. Bev and I are gonna pursue Amherst and East Hampton um, to see if they're interested in this, right? Melissa, you're going to look into what you said. Yep. Okay. Other thoughts? Confusions, Hannah? Uh, I just want to quickly say I can send out an email about recon reconvening the Affordable Housing Trust Fund subcommittee. I feel like we just kind of lost touch between Thanksgiving and all the holidays. So yep. maybe just to get a meeting on the schedule would be good to see where we're at. Um, okay. Sounds great. Hannah. I, I just want to echo what Gordon said about uh, uh, we don't have to do it now, but we should do a schedule of events around this developer meeting because otherwise, you know, it'll just keep dragging on. Um, maybe try and figure out what a good um, target would be for the meeting itself and then work back. You know, we might want to uh, assume it's going to be, you know, late winter, early spring. I don't know, but mm -hmm. maybe people should think about that. Yeah. Definitely, probably spring, I think, but no later than that. Yeah. All right. You have all received your assignments. You have accepted your assignments. You'll report back on your assignments. Any other, I mean, well, I think we've come to the end of this discussion, but I don't want to assume. Any other comments or thoughts about goal setting for this year? All right, good work, everybody. Any other business not anticipated? All right.
Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Thank you everybody for being uh -huh. here. Good work and nice to see you.